Hey there, fellow streakers. It's Jeff. And Jamie. Yes, she is back with me. I'm so excited. We had the wedding, and the wedding was absolutely phenomenal. It was amazing. Oh, I loved it. I loved everything about it. It was beautiful. You just had a moment where you went back in time there. I know. I just went back and was like, oh, it was beautiful. What was it about? What were some of the things that you're thinking about? So our third daughter, Natalia, got married, and we saw many of our fellow streakers at the wedding. Uh, Many of you who are all over the world, we would have loved to have have you there, but uh, the wedding was absolutely beautiful in this great, gorgeous um, wedding hall uh, is where we celebrated the wedding. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was, uh, what I loved about it was that you spend a lot of time doing all the work and thinking about all these details and 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 picking and choosing the things you want to have and making sure everything's going to go off the way you want. Like we did a sparkler exit and so... The timing of things and and all of that and I I love when I it just have, all comes together. I just have one tool to mention here: butane torches. It was great. Butane torches. That's how you light the sparklers. Butane if you have a sparkler, torches and groomsmen. Yeah. They just go well together. <laughs> I boy, I don't know if you want to say that sentence twice because groomsmen they, and butane, butane torches. They were the happiest they were the whole night when I handed them a torch and said, "Do you mind helping me?" And they're yeah. like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll help. We're doing this." So it was great. It was Chris. It was just really wonderful to have put all that effort in and then have it all come together where you just got to see friends and family and celebrate together and be together. And it was it was wonderful. I th- and this was one of the first part. Well, I think the first party that we've ever had post covid where we were actually able to have a, a lot of people together in a space and, you know, weren't worried about necessarily transmitting a whole bunch of disease, basically. We weren't as much, yeah. It was really great to all be together and back in. Back in. Back in the... Back in the action. Yes, with the music and the fun and the... It was just wonderful. Now, who did the music? You did the music. <laughs> it was great. One of the things that uh, one of my uh, loves, I guess, or pastimes is that I enjoyed a DJ. Every once in a while. And so Natalia had special request that you DJ her wedding. Yeah. And she had so much fun. It was so fun to watch her be able to participate for herself as the bride in all the things that she had seen you do for other brides. She really enjoyed that. Yeah, I had fun. I mean, it was just absolutely a blast to be the DJ and the dad and to dance with everyone, dance with Natalia and all the girls. It was great. And you did a good job while I was gone. Oh, thank I you. I listened. I loved listening to the podcast with Danny. That was wonderful. The two. There were two he of them. He really did a great job. I mean, Danny and his professional streaks, the ones that we were talking about. This month, we're talking about professional streaks and how you can be a streaking professional. There is so many applications that you can have for uh, streaks in your professional life, whatever it is you choose to do, that it was... It, it was really enjoyable to talk to Danny and to listen to how he's applied it in his life as an engineer, a very practical in, individual, one right. who looks at it as zeros and ones. You know, it's, well, I love it's the way that he said that. Okay, I'll tell you my takeaways from listening to him since I didn't get to talk and comment, and I wanted to as I was listening. Is I loved that he talked about that as an engineer. Being able to look at it and and the reality that the systems that he deals with are too complex for one person to understand. And Wasn't that cool when that he said really that? I mean, that profound. you cannot contain <clears throat> the entire system in one person's understanding. And so you have to break it into smaller components and understand it at a smaller level, which is what he talked about, How why, why streaking resonated was this, this understanding and methodology of taking something more complex and breaking it into smaller understandable pieces that you can that you can work with Mm -hmm. the second thing that I loved was I loved how he talked about when he's doing his professional streaks someplace other than work Mm. and how he was able to see things differently because he had changed his environment and and not just his environment I mean he had physically changed where he was so he talked about how he has professional streaks that he would do for work that you do during during the week, but that when he would go on vacation, he still wanted to. He his streak was to read an article in or, or read something about systems engineering, and how when he would go on vacation, he would still do that. But being in a different environment, and also I think being in a different mental place where you've kind of set the 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 work mind down for a little bit, 
And now you're, but you're still studying something in work allowed him to think of it and view it differently. I thought that was deeply profound. I've had a couple of different conversations of late about getting out of your routine. Mm -hmm. So many times we talk about, you know, having our routine upset and we've got a morning routine or a night routine or a routine that's during the day. And one of the things that I've heard, and it was just over the last couple of days because I've been studying it, we've been writing the next book, which is the professional, um, or it's the streaking professional. And I've been listening for the different areas of tools that you can use in your personal growth journey or your professional growth journey, which are habits, routines, streaks, and goals. And I listened to, I don't know, three or four different people. It was just yesterday. Talk about how, yeah, I'm in the routine of things and I needed to break out of the routine and I need to, you know, be able to expand my thoughts and my mind and what it was that I was think what it was that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I, I never looked at, you know, the routine is sometimes it, it can take on a a bad connotation. It's I'm in a routine. I'm in a rut. I'm not doing well. I thought you were going to go a different direction when you said that too, that out of your routine and how do you keep things going when you're not in your routine. But it is interesting that how the routine can sometimes put you in a box, so to speak. Yes. And that's what I, so as you were talking about Danny getting outside of his routine, the streak is agnostic to the environment. Right. The streak is something that you do because of who you want to be or become. And as he wants to become a proficient, excellent systems engineer, continuing to move the streak forward, even when he's in a different environment, provides now an opportunity to expand his thinking. And that's it, what I loved yeah. that he talked about the creativity that came. So he was out of his routine. He was out of the regular element of I'm in the workplace. Right. And I'm now in a different place. And therefore, I don't sacrifice the activity that's getting me to where I want to be. However, what I do is change the environment and put that activity in a different environment. And now it's exploded my mind into whole different opportunities. That's really neat. And I wondered, too, if it would help us to enjoy our jobs more. You know, sometimes because a job is so repetitive and 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 this element of I have to go to work feeling. Mm-hmm. As I was listening to Danny, I felt an energy and an excitement of him being like this is why I do what I do. I love it. Engineering yeah. is creative and being able to have this streak outside of my normal job allowed me to be reminded of why I like doing what I do yeah. and that and and the fun part of it which I think is an important thing in all of our professions that we recognize that why we got into it yeah. that there was something we loved about it and to so, not get caught up in all of the minutia sometimes and I felt like he was saying streaking had helped him to remember why he loved being an engineer the creative aspect of it as I listen to you and think about your streak of um, studying at least one design element daily, I don't know if that's the exact streak, but it's something with design, isn't right, it? Right, yeah. At least one design element. Do you find that you, uh, as we, as you get out of you know your routine or the things that you're doing, the box that maybe you're in, and continue to do that elsewhere, do you find that that, I, I mean, is it helpful to you? And I know I'm asking right out of the shoot. I haven't asked you this question well, before. Well, this, this is what I wanted to talk about today is how streaking helps me to see things differently. And not just me, everyone. That was, so sorry, just going back to Danny and then I'll answer your question. When he was talking about the streak that he was nervous to set that he hadn't set yet, which uh-huh. was his the streak that he has is to read an article on systems engineering six times a week. So not every day, he, but basically every day, six days a week. Right. Um, and then from that, he had this idea that he wanted to set a weekly streak to reach out to those authors yes. to send an email. Yeah. And he said he was nervous to do it because he's been thinking about it. As he was talking, though, I was impressed with the fact that he probably wouldn't have even had that thought if he wasn't streaking, if he hadn't started with the streak to read an article. So because he was reading the article it expanded his vision and all of a sudden he's kind of not maybe not all of a sudden but he was thinking i want to reach out to these people yes and and not only that but not only do i want to but i have a methodology that i can do that and and i want to do that so that was exciting to me that it changed the his vision and so what i hear you saying 
I think about my design streak. And what I feel like happens is when you bring something to this conscious level, you're seeing it in different places. You're seeing that thing now. So when I go to the grocery store, sometimes I will notice a certain design element Mm -hmm. because I'm thinking about it. Right. Or just different things, even in, in nature, certain flower gardens are planted a certain way and I'll notice how they did odd numbers or the colors that they put together because orange and purple are complementary colors. And so when you put the orange and purple pansies together, it is much more vibrant than if you just do those kinds of things that you start to notice and see things in a lot of places, not just in the moment that you're, you know, something, something else that you brought up just now that I, that I was thinking about, um, when you started your streak as, you know, you, you've always been interested in design or in, and it really, what we found is it really isn't design though, because what you're interested in is interior decorating. And there's a difference between those two, but you didn't see that. And I didn't see that for a long, long time until you were into your streak for a couple of years. And then you recognize that you are not one that goes in and because what the way that we differentiate it is design is go in tear out walls move things you know remodel that that's what we see as design whereas decoration is most of that is done and now you're putting together the color palette and the furniture palette and the painting palette and all of the different materials that are going to go into the decoration i get for example when i'm on my um when, when i'm on a webcast and people see the what you did, the interior decoration of my office, you know, that's very appealing. You studied that quite a bit. However, the office itself was something that already existed there. You just took that space and then decorated it. Right. So what you did through your streak is recognize some nuances in what you really loved. And I think that that's a little bit what Danny was saying as well. And so one of the things that I've recognized is what is it that I love about what I do and what is it that I necessarily, I, I don't, and I'm going to continue to focus on those things that I enjoy doing in my profession and get even better at those. And it comes back to the, the who do I want to be, which I love that it's a constantly changing and dynamic question. Mm-hmm. As we learn about who we are and who we want to be, some of the things that maybe we thought we wanted. Do you think it's may, changing or is it refining? And is there a difference between the two? Do you think maybe it, a little I'm, bit of both? So your example of 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 interior decorating versus interior design, that was a bit of a change. I thought forever I wanted to be an interior designer. Yeah. As I studied it more, I realized that I'm like, actually I like the decorating aspect of it. That's to me is That's a where you get bit really excited about it. Yeah. 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 And so I think there are some times changing, but definitely for sure refining. Yeah. For sure. Go ahead. That well I just wanted to say the other thing that I was excited <laughs> to talk about and kind of what I wanted to talk about on the podcast today was this idea of overcoming obstacles and mm. how streaking has helped to change my view of overcoming obstacles. And in what way? How has it helped you change your view of overcoming obstacles? So I've been thinking about this a lot. You have? That I have been. How come? What, what's, what brought on the thought? Recognizing that a lot of people who are successful uh-huh. are successful because they enjoy solving problems. Mm. That they, and that, and, and recognizing that I, early on wanted to get to this place where I was comfortable with life. Like a lot of, I would want to remove these obstacles and get comfortable. And as I've spent more time thinking about it, I've come to realize that the obstacles are important and, and seeking for this place of grand comfort is actually a place that's kind of stagnant where you're, where you're not growing anymore. Hmm. And, and so there is this element of being uncomfortable that is required at some level for continued growth. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're kind of putting yourself a little bit past Mm -hmm. where you're comfortable. And so I've been thinking a lot about obstacles and overcoming them and what that means. And what I think about is we we recently watched a documentary called Mully. I mean, we've watched it a couple of times. I would recommend that documentary. It's on Amazon Prime and it's Mully, M-U-L-L-Y. It's phenomenal. And Jamie and I were just absolutely blown away at the level of problem solving that Molly, it's an individual, his name is Molly, that he went to in order to to basically not only survive in his own life, he grew up in 
Nigeria. He's in Africa, yes. Yeah. And he was he and was abandoned as a child. Yes. And grew up on the streets. Grew up on the streets and, and basically became eventually became a millionaire and then eventually multi millionaire. Multi millionaire. Yeah. And then and then I don't want to give it away. I know, I know but you it's have to say cause, phenomenal. Because to listen to the story from where he started, which was a street boy, all the way up to becoming a multi millionaire is only half the story and, and not even only, the amazing part of the story. It's not even the that's amazing part amazing. of the story. I know. <laughs> but the the thing that I looked at is, and that's, you're right. That's kind of what got me started thinking about this deeply is that he really understood how to overcome obstacles. He viewed problems differently. Mm-hmm. And, and with that, he solved a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. When you th- and I look at this place, I think that we all strive to get to this place of comfort. I, I don't think that that is something that one person does or two people do. I don't think so either. I think, I think it's human nature. Yeah, we want to get to this place. It's our natural tendency to get to a place of comfort. Being uncomfortable is not something and I don't that I aim for or strive for. Exactly. And I don't want to discount. I mean, we have a lot of modern conveniences so that we could be more comfortable. And I love those. That's important. Or do we have the modern conveniences so that we could be more productive? Both. <laughs> but Because as I see it and look at it, I'm I'm agreeing with you on this that being being comfortable does not always produce the end result that right. that I want. And so but looking at it and saying what can I do to become who I want to be part of that is continuing to grow and part of continuing to grow is overcoming obstacles. Right. And that's where so when I thought about streaking and how it's helped me to change the way that I view obstacles I recognized that because I have streaks that are every single day Mm -hmm. and I, and, and, and the point is to do them every day. So I can't let stuff, you make it as simple as possible. It needs to be laughably simple so that you can do it in the Mm -hmm. face of obstacles. Mm -hmm. But as I've done it for more years, I've started to realize that I view those streaks differently with the obstacles. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can communicate this clearly. So in other words, that I'll just give an example. This this last trip, we had a long drive, thousands of miles from from Utah to back to Georgia. Yes, and and we were we in were, the car a we lot. Were, we were thirty hours in the car, and we I have a streak to walk or run a mile every day, and I hadn't done it yet. And we were at a gas station in the middle of the day, in the middle, in the of, middle Nebraska. of Nebraska, where there's not much there, and. As we were filling up the car with gas, I was looking around and I thought, oh, I'm just, I could run here. Like there's this little loop thing. Uh huh. And so I just took. <laughs> and what was great is minutes. I was filling the car with gas and she said, I'm going to go on my run. And off she goes. And it <laughs> and was. And I see, I see this little person just running off into the distance around this gas station because it was a pretty spread out, it was expansive. Yeah. It had a hotel behind it. And so you just started running this just loop. This little loop. And I did it, you know, three times to. But what I was thinking about as I was doing it is how easy it's become. First of all, I had packed my running shoes because I've done this enough times to think, oh, I want those with me. And then the second thing was that I looked at an opportunity and thought, oh, I'm just going to take this opportunity real quick. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things that in the past would have been barriers or obstacles for me, we've got a 15 hour drive. There's nowhere to run. I don't have my shoes. I'm tired. I don't feel so great because we've been in the car. We just did a huge wedding. I can take a break. All of those things that in the past would have been obstacles or barriers, I viewed them differently. They weren't as big of barriers, and I was more willing to to overcome those and and to find ways around them. And mm-hmm. and it wasn't as hard as it, as it used to feel. Mm-hmm. And and so I thought streaking has helped me to look at obstacles differently. There's not as many things in my way to be like, oh, well, of course I can't run today. We're driving all day. Right. Or of course I can't run today. I just put on a huge wedding for my daughter. I've been working. I'm exhausted. I'm taking a break. Whatever yeah. those you know thoughts are, the streak has helped me to view those obstacles differently. And as, I, as I'm thinking about what you're saying and hearing it in the realm of my professional life, and the professional things that I do, similarly, I've felt the same way. Yep. Is that I I have, and I've seen many, many other people that we've talked to, fellow streakers out there, that now start to put the focus on 
what it is that they do on a daily basis and being consistent at that. And that consistency then helps to move around, go over, go through any type of obstacle that might exist on getting to where you want to be. And I think part of the secret sauce is that the activity that you're doing is laughably simple. Mm-hmm. So it's not so, I love. Well, it's those three laws. It's, you know, it's the, the streak, the activity is laughably simple. You're keeping a record that you're actually doing it and you're creating a community around right. it. I wanted to tell you something. I was, because I was thinking about these obstacles, I had been looking up different articles about how to overcome obstacles. Uh-huh. And I found this article in Entrepreneur. It's entrepreneur.com. And it's four ways to overcome obstacles. And they, they gave these four ways that you can do it. The first one was to accept your reality, to acknowledge that there are obstacles. I do believe that's important. Don't live in (laughs) fantasy world. The obstacles are real. Right. To craft your story, it talks about looking at them as opportunities, that not every obstacle, if we can look at our obstacles as, as opportunities, if we can reframe them in a different place. But then three and four, I loved. Three was inch forward. Progress begets progress. Identify the smallest, most manageable action. Does it really say that? Like word for word, you're reading it. I just quoted it. I just read it. Word for word. Progress begets progress, which is so true. Yeah. And then identify the smallest, most manageable action. So in other words, inching forward is what they're talking about, how to overcome obstacles. And number four, enlist support. (laughs) Create a community. Really? This is streaking helps you to overcome obstacles. It helps. And it, and and what I love hmm. is that not only does it help you overcome the actual obstacle, the physical, but more what it does is it changes you from the inside. That's what I've really noticed as we've received emails from people, as we've had guests on the show, is this constant return to I'm thinking differently. I feel different about myself. Mm-hmm. I know I can do things. I have more confidence. I feel more creative. Those are things that you can't buy. No. You and and you can't and hurry. And well, and that's what I was just going to say. You took exactly where I was going to go is you can't hurry those things. Mm-mm. Those things come little by little every single day. And when I do something little by little every single day and I record that I've done it and I have a community around it, the credibility inside of myself goes up which increases my confidence and my satisfaction with what it is that I'm doing. Yep. So It's great. People, we know the things we need to do. Now we've got streaking that helps us get started. On the how. On the how. We know the what. You've now got the how. So identify your what you want to do and say, okay, streaking is going to help me. I can't believe that this is already over and that (laughs) we... We're done. For it was podcast. great to be back. <laughs> it's good to have you back. I love having Jamie with me, and uh, we love doing this together. If you have some thoughts or comments, we'd love to hear from you. We've we've heard from so many, and we love getting those emails and contacts. Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y at streakingmastery.com. Or Jamie, J-A-M-I at streakingmastery.com. Please reach out to us and let us know a little bit about what professional streaks you may be currently pursuing and how they've helped you until we talk again keep streaking it's the